One noteworthy thing is if you have long tube headers um, and you're doing the clutch, in order to get to the panel, or in order to take off the excess panel to get to the clutch, um, you have to basically maneuver the uh, exhaust manifolds down so you can get to the bolts and drop that panel, which kind of sucks. So in order to do that, what I had to do was I came up here, I took off my coil packs, the wires, and I had to undo my exhaust manifold and then just let them kind of drop. You may not have to do that based on your setup. Just get under there, see if you can do it without. If you can, great. If not, this you may have to do this. Um, the other part that I also found difficult was trying to disconnect the old slave um, cylinder uh, from the master cylinder. That connection is like right in, it's like on top of the exhaust manifold. So you can't, I physically couldn't fit my hands in there. So that was the other part that um, I ran into. So long story short, if you are doing your clutch, highly recommend you doing the uh, master cylinder as well as the uh, slave cylinder upgrade it if you need to at this point in time so you don't have to take this stuff apart twice. So now what I'm going to do is, now that I realize this is the last bolt, I don't have bolt here, I don't have bolt here, you can see the entire pressure plate is going this way. I'm going to loosen this one up, and as I loosen it up, I'm going to hold this up. Remember, there's pressure plate and there's discs inside of this, so just because you have the outer shell doesn't mean you have everything inside, so just make sure you keep your hand under here once you undo the bolt for everything to come apart. There's the clutch. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is take off the flywheel. Uh, we got those six bolts there. They're probably gonna be torqued down fairly heavy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a, get an impact and take those out.
All right, so one of the measurements that you're going to have to take when you're doing your clutch install, or at least that I did, just to verify my other measurements that I'm going to show you guys, is the height from inside the ground in here up to these fingers, all right? Um, you, can, you can measure it, you know, like this, just to make sure that your flywheel does have this protrusion here and that it's actually flush when it lays down on the ground. So once you get once you get this height, make sure that before you do that that the pressure plate is torqued down with the clutch inside. Get that for your new clutch as well. Once again make sure that everything's torqued down so everything is seated. Um, to see the difference in heights and I'll show you guys how to compute or how to use that to compute uh, if you need a shim or not. All right, so another measurement that you're gonna have to take is of your slave cylinder. So what you gotta do is you have to take the measurement of the slave cylinder when it's extended and then when it's depressed. So you just depress it all the way down and then take the measurement here. One thing to account for is this slave cylinder sits on this surface, not the lip. So for uh, the lip is roughly five millimeters, which actually like four and three quarters, but round it up five millimeters. So whatever measurement you take here and depressed, take five millimeters off for your new one and for your old one. So with the old flywheel out, the only thing left to do now is to clean up that uh, area back of the crank, which I already did. Uh, take note that there is a um, like a pin locator almost on the crank between two uh, holes for bolts. Make sure that you align that with your new flywheel then when you lift this flywheel up make sure the mating surface that goes to the crank is clean and then go ahead put it on I'm gonna bolt it down and then we're gonna do a torque procedure well make sure you put some loctite on there um, then do a torque procedure which is three different passes uh, 25 foot pounds 50 foot pounds and 74 or 75 foot pounds, stuff like that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And after that, go ahead and install the clutch. So this is what it should look like. Um, as you can see, the flywheel is actually flush with the little um, lip that you can see in the back of the crank. Well, it's almost flush, but anyway. So now I'm gonna go ahead and undo these, put some Loctite on them, put them back on. The other part too that you wanna stay away from is getting grease onto this shiny surface as well. Um, before we install the first disc 
we'll go ahead and take off all the grease uh, using like a brake cleaner um, to do that. Also, this is very good time to do, <laughs> there's a bearing inside here uh, that the shaft kind of rides inside of. If you want to go ahead and change that, I'm not doing mine because I'm going to be doing a complete tear out of this engine anyway uh, here shortly. I'm just doing this to break in the clutch. So if you're at this point, make sure you change that pilot bearing in there. Highly recommend wearing gloves. Every single one of these parts are super sharp. Um, if you do slip, it's gonna hurt. All right, so as we move forward with our clutch install, uh, we get to the clutch packs themselves. What we're gonna do now is, we're gonna go ahead and clean these up a little bit and we're going to grease the spline, the splines here. Um, the instructions do call for a light uh, grease, uh, high temp grease to make sure that the spline shaft from the front torque tube or your drive shaft, I guess, uh, does go in smooth and it's not metal on metal. So what I'm going to do here is Well first one thing you should know never touch these with greasy hands, especially not on the pucks <clears throat> uh, Coming out of the box these did have some Dust or I don't know metal particulates, whatever you want to call them on them. So all I'm going to do is wipe these off and I Want to make sure that I'm doing this as close to install as possible so don't put grease on these and have to handle them 15 different times because naturally when you pick them up you're going to want to pick them up like this which when you go to further handle things you're going to have grease in your hands so do this as close to install as possible all right so that's one <clears throat> Here's the second one. So just for your guys' reference, these are different. This guy's um, ring or whatever you want to call this sits up a little bit higher than this guy's. This guy goes in first, then the plate, and then this guy, and then the pressure plate. So in an order of operation, I'm going to grease the shorter one, longer one, and as I transport them, the longer one's going to be on top, which is the first one that I install. All right. So what I'm going to use is 
high temp grease. You want to make sure you use high temp for this. So I'm using red high temp, high pressure grease. It's going to be very, very little. Here we are. I'm at my favorite place, which is underneath my car. It's a good joke. I want to show you guys before you start installing your clutch packs what we need to do. So, <clears throat> shine the light up. I don't know if you can see it or not, but from the install of the flywheel, as you can see here, there's a bunch of crap on there. So, what we need to do is we need to make sure that this surface here, really the entire thing, but especially the shiny surface this here is super clean degreased so um, and that goes for everything that goes on to this clutch so basically it's the uh, shiny surface here on the flywheel once you put the clutch back in there's going to be a uh, another uh, plate that needs to be clean and then the shiny surface mating surface on the pressure plate that goes here as well so we're going to methodically wipe each of those down here to make sure that they are super clean and what we're going to be using is some brake clean all right there it is and some some of these cloths or paper towels that are like shop towels and don't have lint um, this is this is something you want to take your time with make sure that you're doing this right because if you leave grease in there and you start driving and the pucks get greasy, it's gonna be problematic for you. So the other thing to note as well, if you have this clutch, <clears throat> I don't know if you saw my video for the clutch itself, but you're gonna have a mark. The intermediate plates and the pressure plate also have a white mark on them. That's because they were balanced um, when put together in that manner. So make sure that you're, you have this white mark visible so you can line everything up and tighten it down. All right, let's get started. So because I am working underneath the car, I'm not gonna spray the brake cleaner up there because even though I'm wearing safety glasses, I'm sure brake cleaner will get into my eye somehow, some way. So instead, I'm gonna go ahead and spray it onto my wipe here. You know, start with the clutch plate that has the taller, whatever you want to call this, I don't even know what that's called, the ring here, this protrusion. All right, so I don't know if you can see this or not, but you're going to have these tabs. One is going to protrude uh, further than the other. So this guy protrudes further than this guy. This guy goes, goes on the inside. And then the white mark that I spoke about earlier is right there. So that piece is going to sit right around this guy here so let's go ahead and dry this out this is extremely difficult trying to capture this on video so you guys have the lighting and do it at the same time
So here's the end product. Well, kind of the end product. Still got to put a pressure plate on, but just a few things that you guys need to look out for. So also, by the way, brake cleaner does take this paint off, so don't don't wipe it too much. But anyway, so the two white lines are cradling this post here, which is exactly how the clutch came to me. I have my um, installation tool seated all the way in. I can see that there's a little bit of a lip here between this intermediate plate and this pack, clutch pack. So I know it's not sagging. And when I twist it, not only does it twist and look, look like it's going in a circle, but the, um, where is it? There it is, I don't know if you can see it. But the other disc is also spinning. I don't know if you guys can actually see that on the video or not. There it is. You just wanna make sure everything's good, nothing feels. I mean, it's gonna feel a little loose because obviously it's not being held by anything just yet, right? But it should feel straight, spin it, no issues. I have the pressure plate here. Um, the instructions call for factory uh, torque specs on these bolts, and those are 20 pounds, 30 pounds, and 50 pounds. So. And keep in mind, you're also going to be using a medium strength Loctite on this as well. So let me find that white mark, wherever it is. And I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but that's the white mark there. Right there. So that guy goes right here. go. Let me tools back in. All right. Now we just gotta sit here and fight with this a little bit to align everything. And there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and put some bolts in here just to hold it. So now all that's left to do is spin this, put all the bolts in, well not all the bolts in, but spin it, put some red lock or medium Loctite on there, um, get the pressure plate to seat and torque. So let's do it. <laughs> 